It finally happened! 23 years after its formation and 23 years after being eligible, Judas Priest have finally been inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. carpet ceremony the band showed up with their current lineup and of course chatted with the host about their love for metal and how great it is that we now have a third metal band in the hall although many more of course deserve to be inducted And just about half an hour after that, KK Downing showed up with the ex-drummer of Judas Priest, Lars Banks, and the two chatted about their love for metal and how great it is that we now have a third band in the hall, although many more of course deserve to be inducted. <laughs> and while it might be weird for some that the two Judas Priest groups drove to the auditorium separately, I actually think it is quite adherent to the dynamic shown between Judas Priest and KK Downing before the ceremony and it actually helps the fan understand the relationship within the band. Or there might actually be another reason for that. Alright, here's an opportunity to be creative. In the auditorium, everyone thanked the fans. Rob Halford spoke about inclusivity of heavy metal. We call ourselves the heavy metal community, which is all inclusive. It's a matter of what your sexual identity is, what you look like, color of your skin, faith that you believe in, or don't believe in. Everybody's welcome. And KK also honored the band's late drummer Dave Holland, who of course helped Judas Priest forge their sound in the 1980s. The honor to induct Judas Priest was given to the band's longtime friend Alice Cooper, who himself got into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame back in 2011. And the godfather of shock rock, of course, praised Judas Priest for being the definitive metal band, who defined not only the genre's sound but also its look, giving a separate praise to Rob Halford's extraordinary vocal skills. Never have screams covered such a range. Priest has carried the flag of hard rock and heavy metal proudly for something like 50 years, never wavering or following trance or pretending to be anything but exactly what they are. Which, let's be honest here, is absolutely true. They are electrifying on stage and one of the hardest hidden live bands in the history of rock and roll. They are flying high tonight, much deserved and long overdue. And then began what everyone has been waiting for. Welcome to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. By now everyone knows that for the very first time ever Judas Priest performed with two drummers and three guitarists. Interestingly enough, everyone stick to their usual place on stage, thus Glenn Tipton and Ian Hill hanging out on the right side and KK joined Richie Faulkner on the left. And here, right away, I just want to point out how unexpectedly great the dynamics between the two guitarists who'd never played live together before was that night. Ah! As announced before, Judas Priest played a medley of three songs, opening with You've Got Another Thing Common, going into Breaking the Law, and closing with Living After Midnight. So basically I'm proud to say that we guessed it exactly right in our previous video. Among the highlights of the performance, in addition to the aforementioned synergy between the left side of the stage, was the guitar solo in Breaking the Law, which of course appears only in live renditions of the song, and the fact that even despite all of his health problems, Glenn Tipton was also able to play his solo part towards the end of the set. Yes, 
it is true that this medley was not designed exactly for die-hard Judas Priest fans, and it actually included the songs which were never played live by, let's say, Les Binks, who left the band a year before the oldest of them has been written. But there are actually three main reasons for that kind of setlist. Number one, and the most important one, these are the songs which Glenn is currently able to play live. And yes, of course, he has to be part of the celebration. Yes, it's true. Number two, these are some of the most upbeat, party-like songs in the band's discovery. And this night was about celebration. So a song like Victim of Changes, which of course is one of the greatest songs ever, would not be the most appropriate one here. Well, let's have a party. And number three, whether you like it or not, these are actually the three most popular priest songs for the mainstream. And you can actually see and hear from the footage how well were those songs received by the audience and how loud of a cheer did Priest get from the crowd. This performance was one of the most touching ones in the band's history, and I'll be honest with you, I did even shed a tear while watching it. Or maybe it was because I've been extremely sick for the last couple of days and I might actually crash after recording this video. I, uh... But anyway, seeing the different generations of Judas Priest uniting together on stage to celebrate the history and achievement of one of the greatest heavy metal bands of all time was simply mind-blowing and to be honest with you extremely emotional for me personally. And yes, to answer a popular question, I did absolutely love seeing KK Downing and Richie Faulkner together on stage, but just as I said before, I actually still do feel like a grown-up kid of two divorced parents who, even though of course would love them to get back together, would never force them to do that even after a great Christmas reunion because by the end of the day it is they who have to live together. But still, it was absolutely great to see the band at its highest possible potential in 2022, together on stage and heavy metal being publicly celebrated by a pop culture institute. Oh, and by the way, among the other highlights of that night was the fact that Rob Helford got to hug, hang out with and perform Jolie together with his favorite Dolly Parton. And it was absolutely sweet. What is next for Judas Priest? Next, Judas Priest will continue their 50 Heavy Metal Years tour in Ontario, California. And it will be another amazing performance by one of the greatest heavy metal bands to ever walk this earth. And this night of celebration will most likely remain one of a kind, at least for a while. Yet it will always be remembered and cherished by the heavy metal maniacs around the world. And what did you guys think about Judas Priest's performance at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Do you agree with Rob Halford that heavy metal should be all-inclusive and everybody is welcome into our community? And what did you personally think about the dynamics between Ken and Richie, who even though has been in the band for more than 12 years, was still clearly super happy to be performing live on stage together with all of his metal idols? Please let us know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this short video, guys, and I promise there might be another update video coming on the Judas Priest tour very, very soon. We will prevail. Slavo Ukraine.